Like, this email, the audacity of it, like, openly just lying to my face about what they claim to do. When I have the receipts, we act swiftly to resolve the issue. 60 days. 60 days. And after 30 of those days, you upheld the claim. Don't lie. Like, oh my god, my brain. Honestly, folks, right now I'm just tired. I'm just... I'm just really, really tired. Quite literally as well. Sorry if I literally do look quite tired at the moment. I didn't get much sleep last night. I wanted to do this video closer to the actual time that this happened, but uh, I've just been away for a couple of days for work. It's why there's been no stream this past week. There also won't be a stream next Monday. Instead, there's going to be a stream on Wednesday night instead, and we're going to catch up with everything. We're going to be talking with Chris and Crystal from Doctor Who Velocity, the Doctor Who fan series. I'm going to review Doctor Who The Annihilators, and we're going to talk about all of the news that has broken over the past couple of weeks. And if there was a stream this week, I would have talked about this then, but I think this kind of deserves its own dedicated video because at this point I just want it like just on record just how outright malicious and scummy BBC Studios are being seemingly specifically to my channel for no justifiable reason. Okay let's do this dance again. Context. I talk about Doctor Who and stuff online on YouTube on my YouTube channel. A lot of the stuff I talk about often uses clips and because of those clips and YouTube's content ID system and copyright system those videos often get claimed, they often get struck down but because the work is transformative, because it's fair use, because I transform and engage and editorialize and, and do everything I need to to the content itself, it all ultimately succeeds in becoming viewable online and so you folks can enjoy the videos. I've been doing content online for over a decade and I have won literally every single content ID claim and copyright strike that has come my way during that time and the number of strikes and claims that I have had literally number in the hundreds. Let's take a moment however to talk about how the YouTube content ID system actually works from the perspective of a copyright holder. So the copyright holder uploads all of their video content that they want to be able to claim and control and strike on YouTube. They upload it into a massive database on YouTube and YouTube's automated systems will scour every single video that gets uploaded and sees if any substantial amount of an uploaded video matches anything in that database. For example, in my review of The Evil of the Daleks, my re-review of The Evil of the Daleks, which I have disputed, this dispute will expire in seven days, but the BBC will likely turn it down at the last moment and then that re-engages another 30-day timer. But because I played uh, footage from Evil of the Daleks that was longer than like five seconds long, it picked it up here, it gets claimed. And if you wonder why I don't edit and sort out my videos so that they don't get automatically claimed, the reason I do that is because the BBC can manually claim footage if they're able to match it up with what is in their content ID database. So if the BBC became aware of this review of Evil of the Daleks, they would look at it, they would match this footage with what they've got in their content ID banks for Evil of the Daleks, and then they'd manually claim it. So there is an automated system in place, but the copyright holder is able to implement a manual claim in order to basically do the same process. When editing my videos, I make sure that the automated system picks up this clip because I don't want the video to be live and people watching it and then the BBC manually claim it because then that just takes out the video while it's live or people are watching. I like to get it out of the way first because a claimant cannot claim footage for the same thing twice. Once it's done this evil of the Daleks claim, once the copyright period has expired, they can't do it again. And some people have told me, Mr. Tardis, why don't you just use shorter clips or no clips at all? And that seems like from the outside a valid suggestion. However, as I'm about to demonstrate, even that's not good enough for BBC Studios. So for the past year, I've been doing live streams on Doctor Who, like very little footage, just hours of me talking to a live chat, sometimes reacting to the odd thing, bringing on guests for interviews, hours upon hours upon hours of stuff. And I thought, okay, this is completely fair game. You know, I get to talk about Doctor Who, but I don't get copyright claims. I don't get all of this stuff. However, imagine my shock when a couple of days ago, I receive this email from YouTube. Hi, Mr. Tardis. After a manual review, remember that this wasn't an automated process, a manual review, a copyright owner has claimed some material in your video. 
This is not a copyright strike. This claim does not affect your account status. The video title, Doctor Who News Livestream, Why is Thasmin Important, plus 40 Big Finish, plus Dan Van Easter is Canon. The copyright claim is for Doctor Who Series 6, Episode 6, The Almost People. And this is the video in question. This is during a uh, impromptu segment on the aforementioned livestream where I react to Doctor Who clips uh, with very bad visual effects. And this was a really fun segment to do. I did it in an edited compilation later on. I gave it its own segment. But there's a 25 second segment which has been claimed. And just so you folks know what has been claimed here, I'm going to play this 25 25 second clip in its entirety and you know what i'm just going to move my mouse around a load of it just so that bbc can't bloody claim this one as well but here is the clip stuff but the actual creature that you're going to see in a moment here we go you go from that shot to this and it oh boy this is looking rough Let's let's uh, change the focus so we can keep blurring out the background. Okay. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. That was the clip where, after a manual review, a BBC Studios employee had to look at that footage and find that uh, little snippet in order to decide. Oh, you know what? We're going to claim the monetization on this video. So this three-hour and five-minute live stream. All of the monetization and the revenue from this three hour live stream is now going to BBC Studios because they claimed a 25 second portion of a three hour and five minute live stream. I've obviously disputed the claim and I will win this claim, make no mistake, uh, so that once this is all done, the earnings and the revenue will end up going to me. That's what this escrow means. That means that this video will continue to be monetized. But if BBC Studios win this dispute, which they won't and they know they won't, the revenue will go to me but this isn't you know really the big deal here in terms of the revenue whatever this video has been up for several weeks i don't think it was going to be making much more in terms of revenue what really annoys me here is the principle for several reasons let's actually use an illustrative example to talk about how ridiculous this claim is i've opened up sony vegas here let's mute my webcam and you'll be able to see that the almost people is a 45 minute and 14 second video the actual full 25 second clip is here uh, that uh, that has been claimed a 25 second clip in this length of content in a video and not only that but if you look at this top timeline here this nine second one this is the amount of time that the clip from the almost people was actually playing was actually in motion for just over one third of that 25 second period and you saw the full clip in its entirety as well the audio was muted i was frequently stopping and starting there's an actual period of time where i cut away from the footage that my bloody fat bearded faces on the camera and then when it actually is moving you'll see my face on the bottom right you'll see a live chat on the bottom left you'll see the bbc iplayer like progress bar at the bottom as well like this is so cut and dry transformative that the fact that the BBC looked at this and still thought, no, this is fair game. We want the revenue from this video. We still consider this to be content ID infringement is so on the face of it, utterly ridiculous. The Almost People is a 45 minute and 14 second episode and they are now claiming nine and a half seconds of footage from that full thing and thinking no that is too much to be on YouTube and I've already done the math that nine and a half seconds is not 0.3% of the entire episode's content, a fraction of a percent, and apparently, no, that is too much, we don't want that. Even if that nine seconds in question is being frequently paused, is being interrupted by a full webcam shot of the person commentating, the audio is muted, there's no audio in this clip. I'm pausing. I'm using my mouse hover over. Like, this is obviously transformative. Like, I can't even believe that this is something I have to explain. But yeah, this was BBC Studios claiming the monetization for those nine muted stop start seconds in a three hour and five minute live stream and because this was a manual claim 
It leads me to kind of wonder, is someone from BBC Studios on their payroll going through all of my live streams, like two and a half hours, one and a half, one and a half, uh, one and a half, one and a half, nearly two hours, another hour and a half, two hours, hour and a half, uh, hour and three quarters, two hours, ten, two hours, uh, two hours again, two and a, like two and a half hours, two hours, two hours. This one was four and a half hours, three hours, two and a half, three hours. My live streams have gotten longer as I've been doing it more, I'll acknowledge. But is somebody at BBC Studios going through all of these live streams looking for clips to manually claim? Did somebody at BBC Studios actually get paid to go through my 12-hour charity live stream back in November to see if there was something that could be claimed from it? I'm stealing a phrase from Lily Hu from the Mr. Tardis Discord server, and she said, what even is the end goal here, if not malice? And folks, I want someone to tell me and to explain and rationalise this for me. How am I meant to interpret this as anything other than malice? Like, I want someone to explain to me why the <laughs> why this has happened. Like, what is the motive behind BBC Studios here? It is not defending their copyright and intellectual property. I will tell you that for a fact. We go back to this example as well, and I'm going to keep bringing this up, but this was my review of Planet of the Daleks from Dalek Semba back in 2019. This got uh, a content ID claim, a automated one, from Revenge of the Cybermen, but you can see from like this screenshot here that this is John Pertwee. He's on he's on Spyridon. Like this is obviously Planet of the Daleks. There's no Revenge of the Cybermen footage here. However, when I disputed it, the BBC waited 30 days to then reject the dispute. Like either someone there saw that this was a false claim and thought, no, we're going to uphold this anyway, or just isn't checking just isn't fundamentally looking like that they're not taking this on a case-by-case -case basis it's just a blanket approach but it's not just a blanket approach or a scorched earth approach they are actively looking for earth with which to scorch I've said this before, but just let me repeat myself. I understand the need for a massive streaming platform like YouTube and copyright holders to have an automated system to claim this stuff. I completely understand and get it and support it. With so much being uploaded on YouTube and online, there needs to be some sort of automated system to at least have a buffer. I I'm in favour of that. What I'm not in favour of are companies like BBC Studios actively searching for illegitimate things to claim, upholding the claims even if they are not valid, and also striking down videos which they have no intention of upholding if you dispute them. Right now, my channel has a copyright strike because BBC Studios struck down my review of Doctor Who Flux The Vanquishers. I submitted a counter notification, and at time of making this video, the BBC have two working days with which to respond. They've already had eight working days and like 10 days overall. Once that timer expires, the video goes back up, but YouTube's not going to do anything about it. YouTube themselves do have terms of service. They do have rules that copyright holders cannot abuse and misuse their system. But as I learned last night, I spent like over an hour in a live chat with a Google support worker to find out like, is there a way to actually like respond and report people who abuse and misuse YouTube's content ID system? Short answer, no, there is actually no way to respond. In this Google support chat, the guy even like quoted and, and sent to me the terms of service, like do not make false claims, misuse of the takedown web form such as submitting false information may result in the suspension of your account or other legal consequences. So YouTube do have like terms of services and rules for content ID and copyright, but there's actually no way to report it? Like, what's the point in having rules and terms of service and threats that, you know, if you do this, if you abuse this, you may have the, your account suspended or other legal consequences, but how do breaches of these rules get reported, and has YouTube ever actually done that? Because what we're dealing with, with BBC Studios here, is an active misuse and breaching of YouTube's terms of service and their content ID system. Like, unambiguously, the fact that I have had hundreds of claims and strikes over the 10 to 11 years I've been doing this, but have won every single one, is tantamount to the fact that they are falsely claiming videos that they have no intention of upholding. Like, how many videos have I got? Like, 
hundreds and hundreds and there's only three right now that are undergoing some sort of copyright dispute or content id system like issue the last time i did a video on this topic it was like six or seven and those timers have elapsed since then with like no consequences i'm still here the videos are viewable for people my review of the evil of the daleks is going to be viewable in 47 days because the bbc knows they don't have a leg to stand on but they do have this buffer of youtube's content id ID, and YouTube are not going to enforce any breaches of that buffer or any abuse or misuse of that buffer. And here's the funny thing that I discovered this morning. My review of The Evil of the Daleks is going to be another 47 days away from being like fully monetizable, is going to be viewable and everything, That's and it's going to be completely above board and fine. And I discovered this channel this morning, which over the past day has uploaded full 1080p Doctor Who episodes from the evil of the Daleks. Here's episode two in its entirety. I know that this is the animated version and my thing has been claimed for live action footage, but like this is the same scene that has been claimed in my review, but this is just this is fine. And before you say, no, this is probably just a small channel and it fell under the radar or whatever. No, this is an automated system that does not discriminate based on channel size. And also this video is less than two days old. Even if you dispute the claim, you still have to wait 48 hours at least before your video is viewable upon disputing. This timer has not gone over to two days ago yet, which means that it is in that 48 hour cycle and it just, it's fine. It's honestly like that meme of that guy sleeping. Oh, someone has uploaded this full, unedited, 44-minute episode, Doctor Who Attack of the Cybermen on Daily Motion four years ago. Oh, I sleep. Oh, someone posted nine seconds of muted footage from the almost people on YouTube to react and commentate and obscure with like a live chat and a webcam and react and commentate and start and stop it over the course of like under 30 seconds. Oh, real shit. Like, no shade to this user personally he is just an incredible example and illustration of the issue here but yeah evil of the daleks fully uploaded fury from the deep fully uploaded web of fear fully uploaded a lot of i'm a celebrity stuff uh the reign of terror a full color version of marco polo apparently I, I might have to check that out at some point i guess i've never watched marco polo but but yeah th this is absolutely fine oh but nine seconds of right like, react content over 25 seconds nah this is the shit that needs a manual review. Someone on the BBC Studios payroll has to go through all of my live streams to try and find something with which to claim. Now, the, the, the fight the real battle here. You know, fight the real enemy here. The reason this got a manual claim is because during the live stream, I was very conscious of making sure it wouldn't get an automated claim. That's why I would cut to my webcam. That's why I would stop, start, stop, start. It didn't get picked up by the automated one, but that made it fair game for a manual claim. So this is an approach in which I literally had several concessions. I did everything in my power to make it as above board as possible, and it still wasn't good enough. YouTubers like Josh Schneers have like flipped the image and put filters and borders and everything on it. That still gets claimed. I've had people who have like DM'd me asking for content ID and copyright advice because I've just put up with it so much, like asking like how do I dispute this stuff, who have used still images and have found themselves manually claimed. This is BBC Studios actively creating a hostile environment for content creators on YouTube for what gain? Why? You know what? Screw it. I'm going to show it. I, I I said on stream that I wouldn't show it out of respect, but like, wh why should I like give any sort of respect to BBC Studios when they in turn will show no respect to people like me? A while ago, I drafted an open letter, an open email on stream and sent it away. And a few months later, I did actually get a response from BBC Brand Protection. There's no name attached to this response, but I did get it. I won't read it in its entirety. Like it's up on stream if people want to take the time. But anyway, but I, I'll read some like very like choice moments here. We enormously value the fan community that Doctor Who is privileged to enjoy, and so we're disappointed to read that some fans have experienced the BBC as unwelcoming. We love seeing fans' original works that have been inspired by Doctor Who. It doesn't 
fucking look like it! But we always have to balance the fan community's engagement with all things Doctor Who with our commitments to our global licensees and to their audiences who pay for and expect to watch Doctor Who first on their chosen channels rather than on globally available social media platforms. Reaction videos that use an excessive amount of content from our programs risks undermining our licensees and global audiences' expectations and therefore also their investment in Doctor Who. In turn, this puts our ability to invest in future programming at risk. Reaction videos that use an excessive amount of content, NINE SECONDS from a 45 minute episode. But the latter part of that sentence is the most illuminating. That use an excessive amount of content from our programs risks undermining our licensees and global audiences' expectations and therefore also their investment in Doctor Who. In turn, this puts our ability to invest in future programming at risk. This is what I mean when I say that BBC Studios is not doing this shit in order to protect its copyright. They've told me as much. This is not about copyright. This is some like arbitrary, like undermining licensees' expectations for the content that they put out. Our commitment to our global licenses and to their audiences who pay for and expect to watch Doctor Who first on their chosen channels rather than on globally available social media platforms. Like, my review of Planet of the Daleks, like, how can they watch that? Like, classic Doctor Who, how? Where, where are you broadcasting this? And maybe you mean something like more modern, like the revival, like Eve of the Daleks, which is still like undergoing content ideas disputes and stuff like that. And here's the thing, this may come across as cold and like apathetic, but like, you don't decide how people engage with the content you put out. Like, imagine if Disney, like, struck down all reviews of Spider-Man No Way Home because it were released in the UK a couple of days before it did in America, so UK critics could talk about the film, but Marvel and Disney were like, no, strike down those videos because we want to make sure that people don't watch reviews before it gets released in other territories. Like, it, it doesn't happen because it's stupid. <laughs> like, there's no other way to describe it. it it's archaic. There's, like, it, it just demonstrates a complete misunderstanding of the online streaming ecosystem. And please, pray tell, how does nine seconds of muted reaction stop-start footage undermine your licensees and global audiences' expectations? Like, how? This was a manual claim. How does upholding a fraudulent dispute undermine your licensees and your global audience's expectations and investment in Doctor Who? No, you retract the revenge of the Cybermen claim and then you put on the Planet of the Daleks claim. The, continuing from the email, however, we do not, as a general rule, also release our claim in cases where a user uploaded video, e.g. a review and reaction video, has relied heavily on BBC copyright. We don't think it's appropriate for users to generate revenue in these circumstances, where the cost of the original production has been borne by the BBC. This is just like anti-review. This is just anti-commentary. It doesn't matter if you don't think it's appropriate for users. Users are gonna do it because that's just the review online commentator ecosystem. Like you watch film critics on TV or listen to them on the radio and they will play clips from the film that they're reviewing. I watch Mark Kermode film review on the BBC. Like recently he reviewed Nightmare Alley, which is made by Fox Searchlight, which is owned by Disney. It all comes back to Disney, doesn't it? And Kermode played clips and footage from Nightmare Nightmare Alley in that review. Like, what if Disney said, nah, we don't think it's appropriate for users to generate revenue in these circumstances and rely on copyright. Like, you don't even uphold this standard on BBC sanctioned film reviews. Yet you're trying to enforce this arbitrary, archaic thing that you cannot actually do legally. You're only doing it as a buffer because YouTube allows you and enables you to do it. You're trying to uphold these standards upon a community that you won't even uphold upon yourself. And where the BBC considers it appropriate to monetize that content, in this case, claiming monetization for my nine second reaction, the BBC then ensures that payments are made to those who contribute to the making of the content, including actors, 
lawyers, writers, and other contributors pursuant to the BBC's contractual obligations. Um, you should be paying them anyway? And this last paragraph is one of the most illuminating bits, but I need to give it context first. For context, I did a reaction to Jodie Whittaker's casting announcement, and they played it, BBC America played it at San Diego Comic-Con, and I let the BBC know this in the email. I did a reaction video, a clip was used in the whole H at San Diego Comic-Con, as part of the show's official marketing campaign through BBC America, but the next day, the BBC manually claimed many of my videos on my YouTube channel, simultaneously using fan-made video content to promote the show, and also putting up barriers slash deterrents to those same fans. This is the disparity I would like to have clarification on. And in response to this point, the BBC content and brand protection team said, however, in the rare instances where we, in error, claim user videos which do not contain any BBC copyright material, we act swiftly to resolve the issue as we did in relation to the Comic-Con video. We have taken steps since this happened in 2018 to reduce the chances of this happening again. Like, firstly, the Comic-Con video didn't get claimed. Like, the, it didn't there was no issue here. Like, I didn't even mention that the Comic-Con video had an issue like this. I did, however, tell them about this example with Planet of the Daleks and Revenge of the Cybermen. This claim stood on the video for 30 days, then it was manually reviewed, and then rejected, and then had to wait another 30 days in which to become free of the claim. 60 days. Two months. We act swiftly to resolve the issue. 60 days! 60 days! And after 30 of those days, you upheld the claim! Don't lie! That said, the fact that almost all user videos are flagged using YouTube's Content ID algorithm means there are very few user videos that are manually claimed by BBC Studios. This 9 second clip from the Almost People livestream was a manual review. It's, it's the lying that gets to me. Like, Okay, let's be charitable. Either you do not know what is happening with your content ID system, thus you are, like, inadvertently misleading here, or you do know and you're just lying. Like, either way, you're wrong here. We enormously value the fan community that Doctor Who is privileged to enjoy, and was so disappointed to read that some fans have experienced the BBC as unwelcoming. Don't be unwelcoming then! This is so simple! Don't be unwelcoming! Like, oh my god, my brain. Like, this email, the audacity of it, like, openly just lying to my face about what they claim to do when I have the receipts and just claiming some bullshit about undermining licenses and global investments and like c commitment to audiences like you don't dictate that that's not your call openly admitting that you're doing this because you're not upholding copyright or protecting your intellectual property but undermining expectations how this is these don't compute and according to youtube and this live chat there's no way to report this like you've got the bbc openly admitting to abusing YouTube's copyright protection, that they're misrepresenting what they're actually doing with the systems, and there's no actual way to let YouTube know that this is happening. That a YouTube support person, I'm not annoyed at the YouTube support person, they're just doing their job, can actually, like, quote to me and send me, like, the actual, like, rules and terms of service, but there's no way to enforce them. Like, what's even the point of this? What's the point of having these rules? What's the point in having a terms of service if there's no report system or if there's no way to actually enforce it? It's just a virtue signal then. Like I said, I'm mainly just tired and frustrated. It's just like, obviously at the end of the day, I will be fine after 23 days and oh, I will, laugh so hard if after 23 days they try to like manually uphold this claim i will i will chortle 
so hard my brain will ooze out of my ears like this is that's what's gonna happen in 23 days but like, and if that happens then it will be 53 days until this video is monetizable again and it will be f because once again if your video has a content id claimed it gets like negatively impacted in the algorithm which is why i like to get it out of the way so it's not just monetization it like impacts channel growth it impacts like visibility it impacts people like having the videos recommended to them and it, it's appearing in subscription feeds and stuff and also imposing strikes on channels that if you dispute them the copyright claimant in this case bbc studios has no intention of like upholding these strikes upon disputing like these are like active breaches of youtube's terms of service but because they don't enforce because there's no reporting mechanism in place bbc studios is able to get away with it bbc studios can just continue to abuse their systems and like maliciously attack communities like it's not even communities like manual claim this was like targeted like someone's going through hours and hours of my live streams looking for stuff to claim like i don't think there's any other way to interpret this and the gall to say that you know they're disappointed to read that some fans have experienced the bbc as unwelcoming when they're actively being unwelcoming and hostile and malicious to specific creators this is you this is not a two-sided thing oh yeah and i forgot about this bit in the email uh, when user reported content is blocked by content id and a user challenges the block we assess each challenge on a case-by-case -case basis firstly i know that this is not true i have never had a copyright or content id claim on a video that the bbc did not run down the 60-day timer over the past five six years when the bbc started being particularly egregious about this like it is n it's not happened like every single time so they're clearly not going case by case like i said it's just own up to it stop lying in many cases we do then unblock the video provided the user has not used an excessive amount of bbc content to this extent we often go beyond what would be permitted under the law of fair dealing in the uk or its us equivalent fair use oh we often go beyond what would be permitted we are so good we're so kind we're so generous to the communities we actually do better than is what is expected of us yeah oh it's sure f looks like it. F f no, f off.